Well, hello there. How's it going? Today we are looking at Sway. And uh, Sway is a compositor for Wayland. And that's kind of comparable to a window manager in X11 or Xorg. But in Wayland, they are compositors, and the difference is that they do some more stuff than just window management. So in X using Xorg, you'll have Xorg itself doing some things, and then you'll have window manager doing window management. But in Wayland, you have a compositor, and that compositor kind of does everything. So it handles like your display settings, it handles your inputs, and all of that is handled by the actual compositor itself and not by like some other thing like it would in X11. And Sway is a compositor, it's a very popular one uh, in the Wayland space. Of course, Wayland is not as popular as X11 is in any case, but Sway is a very big one in this space of Wayland compositors. So that's something to take into account. And as far as like what Sway is goes, it's aiming to be kind of an i3 replacement. So if you're familiar with window managers, you might know the i3 tiling window manager. And uh, Sway aims to be fully compatible with i3 and uses similar config files and uh, does everything kind of. It kind of aims to be the same sort of. Uh, Compositor as i3 is a window manager. So, if you have used i3, this might be very familiar. And if it's something you like, then this is probably something you will also like. Uh, now, this is a bit different. What I have is a bit different from stock config, like altogether. Like, for example, the stock one will have, will be using Sway Bar, which is uh, their own status bar that you can use. But I'm actually using Waybar, which is a different Wayland bar. But it works perfectly well inside Sway. So that's something that's worth knowing. And uh, I love the background noise right now, but we can take a look at the actual config for that bar. So Sway stores its configs inside, not there, but inside config. Sway config. And inside here we can actually find like there's a where is it? There's a yeah here we go. So there's a section called bar that you would use to actually it's a bar. Now if you stock sway bar, you can just define like the actual bar like uh functions, the bar like sizes, everything. You can define it all of here. However, I'm using way bar, so I have defined simply here that um our sway bar command is sway bar instead. So basically what this means is that instead of launching sway bar, when it's launching the sway bar, it's actually launching way bar instead. So that's basically what this means. So we are running a different bar instead of the stock one. And also we have uh, set here workspace buttons. Yes, basically this allows a workspace button module for way bar to work. I'm not using it, but they have this enabled anyway. Because why not? And I might want to change my Waybar config at some point to include them. But right now I have chosen not to. And then we have other stuff in here. So you can see we set our inputs here. So we don't use some central config. Instead we set our like keyboard layouts inside the compositor config. Which is where this is very different from like X11 stuff. And the same thing goes if you go to the top of it. Uh, we can see we're actually setting like our mouse sensitivities. We are setting our display refresh rates and resolutions here, backgrounds here. It's all being handled in this one file. Of course, like it depends on what, like if you use a different background thing, uh, you could, but I'm using Sway background. So I guess I'll set that here. And uh, you can see it's very different from like how many different X11 stuff would do it, because it also would just have like handle the window management and then have like Xorg doing the inputs and refresh rates and stuff separately, universally, and then have uh, like a separate background application and so on. But this one, you just kind of do everything in the compositor settings. So there you go. Of course you can use like alternative things. So you can use a different background thing if you want to use a different background thing. You can use a different bar like I'm doing if you want to and so on. But you can define everything in this one compositor uh, settings. So that's very different from what I'm used from X11. 
and uh, it's one unique thing. But beyond that, it's pretty normal config, so you can, I mean, it's a bit confusing, but basically I have my organization is a bit of a mess as well. You can see, like, I have default border. That's just the other way to, like, window border, so by default, the windows will have, like, borders around them, as we the matches often do. You know, you'll have a few pixels of uh, some color, whatever you set. Uh, but I don't want any of that, so I have disabled the border by setting it to none. And that's what that does. Then you have just like key bindings, so you can see how it works. You just set like bind sim, and then you set your key bindings. Like the mode is a variable that we have defined at the top. So we have that defined like right up here. And uh, then you just put in the actual command that it does. So that's how that works. And there's some inbuilt commands like workspace number, blah, blah, blah. And then it will go to those workspaces. And uh, then you also have like mode resize. So if I want to resize things, you can resize uh, things. Basically, these here allow me to change how much it resizes by and what buttons it does it by. So if I want to, like, let's say I want to have two windows, right? So let's say I want to do mod R, then I can just use like my WASD keys to like control size and now you can see it's no longer doing it because I get a key again for actually working on it so that's how that works then you know you can there's a whole bunch of more things you can do but basically you can do these basic things also you can set like gaps so I have set it so that it when there's multiple windows it will have like a one pixel gap in between them just to like have a bit of a separation between windows but also I don't want to make it big because that would uh, take up space, which I don't want to do. In any case, that helps a bit. And by the way, the smart gaps function, which you can find here, is what allows it to have only gaps when you have multiple windows. Then I have to set this thing, so to accept like uh, Wayland, XTG, blah, blah, blah. This is to make GTK themes work. Uh, and, or was that work? No, I think, it, no, no, this is for getting OBS to work. Uh, but in any case, it's to getting stuff working anyway. And here we can define like some colors. So basically what this does is if I, like you guys have your like actual like indicators and stuff. Basically, if I set sort of layout, you can see I have a border. So basically this layout allows me to have tabs. And that like gives like this kind of stuff for like title bars. So these controls here just define the title bar colors, uh, basically. So that's how that works. And then I also have defined like the actual fonts on those title bars. But let's end the look at the config. It's fairly simple stuff. They have good documentation on it, so it's all clear uh, reading from that. But yeah, it's basically a tiling window manager, so you can uh, like open up. They will by default open like this. But you can also just layout up, so you can make it, instead of, you know, going horizontally, you can make it go vertically. And then you can also use the aforementioned, like, tab layout. So you could do that. And then, like, if you go back here, I have set it to WSD to kind of manage sizes. So, you know, if I'm here, I can use say ND to move windows. If I'm here, I can use send W. And by the way, this one of the weaknesses of Sway is that you can't have, like, at general, like, move next and previous window, you have to have directional ones, so, like, specific directional ones, so I can't have, like, I would be used to having K and J just move, like, back and forth, I can't have that, I have to have, like, up, down, left, and right, which is kind of annoying, but I haven't gotten used to it, so that's something to take into account, it's a bit annoying, and uh, that's just something you have to do, so, not up to now, but I can make deal with it, and also, like, the say applies for, like, moving windows, so you don't have that many layouts. Like, I said, you can have this layout and the tab layout, but you can't have, like, there's no, like, grid layout. There's no, like, master uh, what, master slave layout, no, 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 like that. You can't have What you can do, though, is, man, like, modify your current layout so I can, like, move windows below and, like, two sides, like this. So, like... This sort of thing is very possible. And then I can just move like here. I can make this here. Then I can go here and make that. You know, I can use my actual WASD along with the mod key and shift key 
to move windows around and just chase the out a bit. And you know, it will also cur like correspondingly change when I make it horizontal or vertical. Uh, and yeah, it will kind of do like this, like if I do... Because it's set now in like a group setting, I have basically set a few of these into different groups. Vertical horizontal, it can actually make the tab layout kind of do a uh, thing like this. And then I can just kind of continue doing the whole tabbing system here inside this. So it's a bit of a, a unique one. I'm still, even after having used this for quite a while, I'm still getting used to it. But yeah, it's a bit of a funny like layout system. It's something you get used to. It's strong in its own way. If you like just like managing things as you go and like just moving them around like this, then it's great. But if you want to like have something that automatically makes a grid, which I'm very used to doing, then this is not going to do too well. Also, you can move them with your mouse. So, like, if I want to do like this, I could move the mouse and swap them up. So, that's an option you also have. Uh, that's nice, though. I like being able to do things with my mouse as well. Uh, although I don't use it a lot, I mostly use my keyboard. But it is an option regardless. Then, you also have workspaces. So, you have, like, I have said to allow me to go to four different ones. So, like, I have one, they have two this OBS, then I have three, which is nothing. I can open up the terminal here and make a pfetch. And then there's a four. So now I have one, two, three, and four. Uh, however, if you like next and previous commands, they will only go to workspaces with stuff on them. And you can't change this. So, if you want, you can't like have a next and backwards workspace key that would go to an empty workspace. They will only go to workspaces with actual things open. This another thing I find annoying because I like going like, you know, like super and then like arrow key to next workspace and then go to like empty workspace as well. But I can't do that here. I'm stuck to uh, using the number of keys to go to them because I can't go to empty workspaces with my keyboard uh, without using number of keys, which is very annoying. But it's whatever. Once again, I'm not used to it, but it is another weakness. If it's a very key part of your workflow, then you probably want to look at some other compositor because this is a weaker part of this particular compositor. It works very much like i3 in that it's a, like dynamic workspaces, so it only it only has the workspace when there's stuff on it. So if you leave a workspace which is empty, it destroys the workspace from existence. So you can't go back to it without using the key binding to open up the workspace and create it, which would be mod four in my case or mod three mod so on. So that's a bit annoying, uh, but it's whatever. Uh, once again, it's I can deal with it, but it's not what I'm used to, not what I have been doing forever. And, uh, you know, I would love it if it's a bit different uh, in some ways. Uh, I'm probably going to look into other compositors as well, because, like, it's... Not my optimal workflow, let's put it that way. It's good, I like it, but it's not... I prefer some other window matchers, like DWM was much nicer workflow-wise, and Qtile was nicer, and uh, Spectre WM somewhat nicer. Like, I do, though, have, like, the option of got, like, full, uh, full full screen, though, and, I mean, I like the tab thing as well. It's very useful, actually, having the whole tab layout. I like this a lot, uh, but still... I wish I could have, you know, like, proper workspaces that I can actually go to without them being deleted every time that I they go empty and stuff like that. It's just not optimal. Uh, but beyond that not being not optimal, I really don't have many problems with it. If it's what you like, if it's your optimal kind of workflow, then it's a very good window matcher. It works very reliably. There's no, like, crashing, no, like, input issues. Well, Firefox crashes occasionally, but that's Firefox. Uh, it's not a, it's not space fault. It's just Firefox being Firefox. Uh, then uh, you know nothing else. Also, I'm running like Cirola as my app menu. Once again, by default, use the menu, but I have changed that to use my own thing as well. So just some of my own preferences to make things running. But overall, it's a very good window manager or a compositor. It's just a window manager, it's a compositor at this point, but like it's. It does what it does well. It integrates very well with other stuff, like the bar works perfectly well. Everything takes into account the bar. The bar can read like windows from the actual compositor. 
it can read workspace from it if I enable that option, it can do everything, even if it isn't actual sway bar. Uh, and although, of course, it's just because sway bar has support built in, but you know, still. And everything just kind of works fine. But yeah, it's an i3 type, type compositor, so you have the whole dynamic workspaces thing going on. Really not much else to say. It works well for what it is. It's not my optimal workflow. I'll probably be looking into other alternatives at some point. But it does it for me for now, and I rather like Wayland uh, as a whole. So I'll be sticking to this as my compositor for the time being. And uh, yeah, there's that's about the end of it. So if you have anything else to ask, feel free to ask down below, and uh, I'll be seeing you in the next thing.